Now we are going to start with an interesting topic that is the echo. It is an important property of sound. You must have encountered that whenever you get to a, go to any hill station, you stand on the top of the hill and you just uh, the, like say a uh, name of somebody. So that you can hear that sound after uh, your like if, if you just complete the saying, then then also you can hear that sound. Suppose I say that uh, I I say any word. So when I when I finish, finish that word, I can hear that uh, uh, this, the saying of word again also. So this is something called as echo. So what is echo? Echo is repetition of sound, repetition of sound after striking some smooth distant object. So that means when you speak something you finish it off and after that also you are able to hear that sound that is called as echo. So let's see that uh, what are the conditions which are required to hear an echo because we cannot produce echo everywhere. Suppose I am speaking so I am uh, like I am uh, explaining you something so I am just uh, speaking once and I am not able to hear it again. But uh, whenever I speak in a this thing, uh, uh, an, an empty house which do not have any kind of curtains and all if I speak something on the hill uh, standing on the top of the hill then we, I can hear that sound. So why not hear? So we will just discuss this topic that what is an echo. So I think it is clear that echo is the repetition of sound after striking some smooth distant object. So what is the criteria, what are the conditions which are required to hear an echo? So first we will see that how an echo occurs. Suppose this is the source of sound, this is a man let us say right. So this is the source of sound, One, uh, uh, this person is emitting certain kind of sound. So it moves a certain distance, let us say that distance is x. So when the sound waves uh, strike this object, it gets reflected back, travel through a certain distance, same distance, x and it is here. So that means the, the, source, uh, the source can hear its sound again. So let us see that uh, what is the minimum distance between a source and the object is required in order to hear an echo. So if we say that we know that speed is equal to distance upon time. So I can write V is equal to distance I am denoting by S upon time. We know that distance here is X and X total distance is 2X. So it is V is equal to 2X upon T. So if I will say that minimum distance which is required it comes out to be V into T upon 2. Substituting the values we know that velocity of uh, sound uh, in air is 332 and time period what we will take is we will take is persistence of hearing. We know that persistence of hearing is the time period for persistence of hearing is 0.1 second. I think you can easily recall what is persistence of hearing. Persistence of hearing is that the sound which we heard last in a year for one tenth of a second. The sound which we actually hear last for one tenth of a second. Like if, if you hear that sound uh, before this, before this time period you are not able to hear that what that person is saying. But if that sound comes to you after it vanishes off that means after 0.1 second you can make out that what that person is speaking. So this is what is called as persistence of hearing that the sound which we listen lasts in a year for one tenth of a second if we say 0.1 second. So persistence of hearing obviously it has to be there because if the sound will come before the persistence of hearing we won't be able to hear that. But we are able to hear that sound like we can we are able to hear an echo clearly. So that means it comes after 0.1 second. So divided by 2 it comes out to be 16.6 meter. So that means which is approximately taken as 17 meters. So that means this is the minimum distance required between the object or sorry source and a wall or any distance object in order to hear an echo. So what are the more conditions which we can see that what are required? So that means minimum distance, minimum distance between source of sound and object should be 17 meters or 16.6. And moreover the sound should be sufficiently loud, the sound should be sufficiently loud and even the intensity of sound should be high, intensity of sound should be high. 
So these are the three conditions which are required to hear an echo and moreover like uh, sometimes you are able to hear multiple echoes. So that multiple echoes phenomena is called as reverberations. Sometimes we hear multiple echoes. So multiple echoes are called as reverberations. Right. So, whenever there is uh, an empty uh, hall or something there you can uh, this thing listen to in multiple echoes because there is a multiple uh, reflection of sound from each corner. So, that is that is what is reverberation and whenever there is reverberation we are not able to hear the sound clearly. So, we can actually reduce reverberations how we can use this sound like uh, if you if you are having a function in an auditorium in your school. So, there can be reverberations they can be multiple reflection of sound that means so then you would not be able to hear that what that person is speaking. So, in that case to reduce vibrations what we can do is we can uh, make use of uh, sound absorbing material, we can you make use of sound absorbing material, we can use make use of curtains and all and we can use make use of carpets and all, we can make the ceilings curved slightly and uh, you know that uh, if we do like this then they can actually absorb the sound and that means the there would not be any multiple echoes and we can hear the original sound very clear. So, this is what is reverberations and this is what is echo. I think you got it. So, now we are going to study start with another topic. So, just look at the board carefully.